Hey guys, it's Meme, and today we are making this super cute bridge card that looks like a fireplace and is wishing someone a very, wishing them a long and joyful holiday season. This is a make a fuss card. If you're not familiar with that, those are cards that I make that we make a fuss over. It takes a little time. It's not really a mass production card. It's one that you'll have to sit down and do, but it's super easy and super fun, and I hope you enjoy this process video. So without further ado, let's get started. To get this card started, we're going to need two pieces for our base. The largest piece is five by ten, and then our bridge piece, the one that will be the fireplace, is three and three quarters by seven. Now we need to do some scoring. Also, don't worry about measurements. We're going to have that in the blog post that we link below. So there's a lot of measurements on this card, but they'll all be listed for you in that blog post. Okay. So on your first panel, with it in your scoring um, board at the ten inch side. Your first score mark is one and three fourths all the way down, then three and one quarter, then six and three quarters, and then eight and one quarter. And that will get all of your marks done for you. Okay, so on your three and three fourths by seven inch piece, here's what you need to do first. You need to put this in your to your into your scoreboard on the three and three quarter inch side. We're gonna make two score marks all the way down. Okay, so the first one is we're going to score at one and a half, and then our next one is at two inches. So those are guidelines for us right now. Now I'm going to make some with markers as with marker lines so you can see them as we go. So give me a second to get that one started. Okay, now we're going to turn this in our scoreboard, and this matters, okay? The one and a half inch section is the top and the larger section is the bottom. So the fireplace goes here, the bridge or the mantle goes here, okay? So now we wanna put this into our scoreboard just like this, and we're gonna score in these two spots. We're gonna score at one and three fourths to our top line and stop, okay? Then we're gonna score at five and one quarter to our top line and stop. Let me show you those two really quick. Now that it looks like that, we're gonna flip it around in the scoreboard with those at the bottom, and we're gonna do our top marks at here now. So we're gonna do this one at two and a fourth to our top line and stop, and four and three fourths to our top line and stop. This is the most confusing part of the card. If you figured this one out, you've got it made. The rest is easy. This is just the piece we need to put everything together. All right, so this is what it looks like. I will do some writing on here to make it make sense. So this is gonna be your mantle turn back, the piece that goes between the card itself to hold it up, and this is gonna be the fireplace cutout. All right, now here's what you don't need. You don't need this, and you don't need this, and you don't need this. So we're gonna go ahead and cut those away. So I'm just gonna use my scissors here, and I'm gonna cut, and you guys asked me this, and this is important here. We're not gonna cut in the ditch of the score line. We're gonna cut to the mantle side of the score line. So I'm cutting the score line off of the mantle to the top line, okay? And then here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut the score line off all together. So I'm cutting right beside my score line. So this piece, there we go. I don't need that piece. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Cut that piece away. And then I'm gonna come down on the inside, cutting the score mark off just like so. And that gives our mantle, or gives our little turn back piece, just enough space to turn back without being cramped. There we go. All right, now we need to take the fireplace out. This is the opening for our fireplace. So again, I'm gonna cut away my score mark. Just this little section here. And then I just need to go up inside of here and cut this piece off as well. I don't quite have those sliced up enough. If you slice into the top a little bit, don't worry about that. This is gonna get covered up, but that way we can get up in there and cut this guy off. There we go. That is what we need, okay? Obviously without the marker marks, which I'm gonna redo myself one here in just a second, but that's what you need right there for the mantle part or for the bridge of the card. Okay, so now let's score our brick piece, or our fireplace piece that's gonna go around the opening that we just created. This piece is four 
by two and a quarter. On the four inch side, you wanna score in three quarters of an inch here and three quarters of an inch here. I'll show you how I do it. I hold it here and I just come in from four, three quarters of an inch. So I'll score here and then I'll turn this guy around and come in from four and score in three quarters of an inch. And that's just easier to hold than trying to hold it here and get three quarters of an inch on this side. Now I need to score a half an inch down. So I'm gonna put this in the scoreboard like this and from two and a quarter, I'm gonna go back half an inch and score the top. This will now be our brick opening. And I'm actually not gonna cut this out yet. We are gonna cut this little section out, but I need to stamp this. So I'm gonna leave that in there while I stamp it just for ease of cleanup later. So I'm gonna leave that there for now. We have lots of stamping to do. So we're gonna get that started by using this large Ducrafts brick background. This guy is huge and I just leave him on his acetate sheet and I'm gonna ink him up and then take my paper to it to make things easier. And here's what I'm going to be inking. I've decided I want this to be brick and I also want my fireplace to be brick. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink up the um, brick background here. And first I'm just gonna ink up enough for my little red fireplace. Just gonna go ahead and get this section in the middle. And I really don't care if they match. That's not really what I'm going for. I just wanna get brick pattern all the way around. I need that to be a little larger. All right, and now I can lay this down and get some brick pattern on it, just like so. Mostly worried about the edges, not the center, because I'm gonna be cutting that away. And you can always put a piece of paper on here, just something scrap that's bigger and just rub that in so you can get it all the way to the edge. There we go, pick this guy up. And now we have a brick fireplace there. So this is my mantelpiece and I want to stamp it in this brick pattern. So I'm going to use, this is by the way, the Ducrafts um, brick pattern that is the big, huge um, stamp. And I just leave it on its acetate and flip this over to stamp with so I can see through it. And since this is just kind of a pattern background, it's not that big of a deal that it's not absolutely perfect. I'm just gonna lay this down about halfway on my piece here. I can still see through. I'm just gonna rub this down. And if the brick pattern's not perfect, that's okay too, because it's brick, right? And I'm gonna be putting stuff on top of it as well. Right, let me clean this up and we're gonna do the other side. Now I'll just do the other half, just kind of lining that up, not perfectly. Just getting that down there, this will work just fine. So this is now our um, mantelpiece or our bridge piece, and this is gonna be our fireplace that goes around the edge to give us some red. So I'm gonna put those aside for now, and we have a lot more stamping to do. Okay, let's do our decorating stamping. So over my fireplace, I wanna have a wreath. This back panel is gonna go as my wallpaper. I don't need to stamp that, but this piece, I wanna have a wreath on it. And I'm gonna be using the stamp set called Insta Wreath. Let me show you. This guy, I'm gonna be using all three of these. Um, and we're gonna be using a lot of stamps off here today, but let me show you how I'm doing this one. All right, so first things first, we need to lay down a base. And I'm gonna use the Shady Lane from Versify and Claire. And this is the um, thicker wreath. This is kind of the, the pine bow part of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and ink this one up. This is the one I'm gonna start with. And I've already got this piece cut to size. So I'm gonna try to center this in the middle as best I can. Just like that, stamp that down. Perfect, okay, let's go into the second layer. My next layer, I'm using Green Oasis from Versify and Claire. And this is the almost eucalyptus looking piece. I'm not really sure what kind of plant this is, but it looks very eucalyptus-y to me. And what you do is you just twist this until it lands right where you want it. It's really easy to do. You cannot mess this little wreath up. So I'm just gonna twist that till I get it where I want it. Press that down, and there is layer number two. And now I need to do number three. Now number three is technically pine cones, but I want a little look of berries on here. So instead of stamping them in brown, I'm gonna stamp them in red, and they look kind of berry-like when I'm done. So this is glamorous. And here's my little, what would be pine cones. So just ink those up really quick. And again, you just twist this until it gets to where you want it to land. You can kind of see where all the, all the red is gonna go. You just wanna make sure you have a good bit of white behind your red. And when you get there, you just know it. And this looks good for me, so I'm gonna sit this down into the stamp. This will be our third layer. And that gets us kind of the red berry look. I love that. 
Now I want to emboss this, but here's the thing. I want to emboss the bow that comes in that set on this in gold, but VersaFine Claire stays wet a good long time, even when it's not wet to the touch. Like I can do this and not smear it, but if I were to put embossing powder on this right now, it would stick. So I need to let this sit and dry for a minute and then come back and do this. So just for safety's sake, I'm gonna put this guy aside and we'll do our embossing in a little bit. Let's continue some more stamping. While I have these colors out and handy, I'm just gonna pull them back over. I wanna make a garland that's gonna go onto my um, fireplace. And I wanna show you how I did it. This is a lot of fun for me. I think this is a fun technique. Check this out. In that same stamp set, so far we've used the same one. We are gonna use some different ones. Um, but so far we've used the same one besides the bricks. These berries and these two pieces come in there for you. And what we're gonna do is make our own garland. So this piece is just long enough, plus a little extra to go across my fireplace mantle. And I'm just gonna make for myself kind of a little wavy line as if it were my garland on my fireplace, okay? That's kind of the direction I want to go in. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna start with my um, dark color first. So that will be Shady Lane. And then I'm gonna start with my pine bow looking one. My fingers are filthy, by the way. And then on the end, this is gonna be my end piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that there. So that lets me know I'm ending there. And I'm gonna flip this around and do the same thing on the other side. But this time I'm gonna turn it a little bit and that will let me know that's the end there as well. So that way I don't um, run off the page. That gives me a start and a stop point. And now I can go through and just stamp my garland willy-nilly down this line. Try to stay pretty close to your line. That's gonna help you um, get the feel of garland. When I get to the middle, I'm gonna turn it and work my way the other way. Don't worry too much about how it looks right now. We're gonna do a lot of filler on this. It's gonna look great. It's a natural product, so it's hard to really mess up, you know, greenery. All right, next to my next green color, which again is Green Oasis, and back to the look of that little um, eucalyptus piece. So I'm just gonna go in here and there and add that little green piece. And do it in the same colors as your wreath. We'll have your um, wreath and your garland matching each other. Just fill in any spaces with your little extra pieces. And do the same thing. When you get to the center, just turn this guy and go, go the other way. And then lastly, the berries. So I'm just gonna dip into my red here. And anywhere I have a spot that I can fill in, I'm gonna add those berries. So the cool thing about the berries is even though we're stamping on top of the green, it kind of sends them to the back because the color looks like the um, that they're nestled into the greenery. And I'm being kind of heavy with the berries. I like to add the red. The other thing you can do, you don't have to stamp the whole piece. If you just need a little bit of red in a spot, just kind of do that and you get like half. So you don't even have to stamp the whole stamp down. Okay, now it's time to fussy cut this guy. I know that strikes fear in the heart of so many, but this is easy to fussy cut. It's very hard to mess this one up. What you're really gonna do here is just drive the paper into your scissors and you are not trying to cut out all these branches, okay? Not every leaf gets cut and it doesn't have to be perfect. You will just have to trust me on this. When you see the finished card, you are not gonna judge how perfect your fussy cutting is. So you can see, I'm just driving my scissors around. I'm not really trying to cut any particular shape out. I'm just kind of nestling the scissors in between the branches here and there, and I'm not trying to be perfect. Now you might be thinking this is not gonna look good on the card, but I promise you it is, and here's why. We're gonna be putting this where there would be a white mantle piece. So the white behind here is not gonna bother the eye. You'll see when it gets there. You gotta trust the process. So look, we made garland, it's super cute. So I'm gonna put that aside and we're gonna continue stamping. So I thought it'd be super cute to do a couple of pieces that look like pictures hanging on the wall. So this is what we're gonna use. This is the little frame and the little white piece that I'm gonna stamp on, that'll be my picture. So I'm gonna put these guys aside for now and stamp these two. And for these, I'm just gonna grab my Nocturne because it's close, it's the same ink I've been using, it's just the black version of that ink. So this little stamp, again, is from the Insta Wreath stamp set. So, so far, just two stamp sets, the brick and the Insta Wreath. So I'm gonna stamp Merry Christmas onto this little sign. Cute enough. And then on the other one, I'm going to stamp 
Christmas begins with Christ. I think that's cute to be little signs. Just stamp that right like that. And when it's time to assemble, we'll put those together and make them look like the little pictures. So now that we have other stamping out of the way, let's go back and do our bow. So this is the piece that I let dry for a very long time because like I said, VersaClair will stay moist for long enough that you can actually emboss it for up to five minutes. I actually did a test on that. It's pretty cool. So here's my embossing powder pad. So I'm going to really heavily powder this because I do not want it to stick anywhere but where the bow is going to be. Here's my bow. I'm going to ink it up. Again, this bow is from the same InstaWreath stamp set. We are using three today, but so far we've only used two, the InstaWreath and the Brick. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to stamp this on top of my wreath because I want it to hang to the bottom. So just let that sit, let that ink transfer really well. Pick that straight up and now I'm going to emboss it in gold. I think it'll be pretty on there. I just have scrap paper underneath. And then I'm just going to tump that on. Do it again. I always kind of do that twice so I can make sure I get it on really well. All right, that guy's ready. So I can take this now and I can tump it back in. Now I preheated my gun just a second ago, my heat gun. I wanted to make sure it was nice and hot, but you wanna make sure you preheat before you do this. So I'm just gonna turn this on and then we're gonna melt our embossing powder. Did you see how quickly that happened? Because I preheated, it went really fast. Look how pretty that is. Love it. Okay, so this guy is now ready. Now I wanna show you something. Even though I have let my ink dry for a very long time, do you see how it's still stuck a little bit to my VersaClair? I'm not worried about that. It's pretty, it's a wreath that looks good, so we're gonna let that go and call that one done. Okay, this is going to get mounted onto my little wallpaper. I tell you what, let's don't do that yet. Let's start assembly. Okay, I need to trim out my little fireplace. Remember I told you this was gonna be the fireplace? So I'm gonna turn this over so I can see my score marks. Can you see my score marks? There's one there and one here. I'm going to cut in the ditch of those score marks. So just right in there, and I'm only doing this inside rectangle. Once I cut this out, it'll make sense. You made these marks earlier, so they're just sitting there waiting on you to cut them out. So I'm gonna do this. You could do this with your X-Acto knife if you wanted to, or with, um, uh, just a ruler and a craft blade, but I'm just gonna cut it right with my scissors just like this. This is getting glued onto another piece, so even if it bends a little bit, it'll still be sturdy on that other piece. So look, there's my fireplace brick to keep. Don't get rid of this, this is cute. You could use that for something else later. All right, we've got so many elements made. Let's go start assembling. So here, we'll move that away. Here is my card base, all right? And what we need to do with the card base is we need to do our um, folding and our creasing. All right, so with all our score lines here, I'm gonna turn this over like this, and my first score line needs to go back. So I'm just using the card itself to help me get nice and straight, and I'm gonna take my bone folder and just run it right down the side and crease that really snug, okay? Then I'm gonna come to the top side and bring this one back. So basically, we're just kinda doing an accordion fold there. I'm gonna turn it over so you can see it. There it is. And I'm gonna crease that one down as well, just like so. And that will be half of my card there. Now I'm gonna do the, other, the same over here, just by folding in, creasing down, and then folding out and creasing it down. Perfect. This is the inside of my card. Before I go any further, I wanna stack my elements that are gonna go here to save me a little bit of headache later. So here I have two pieces that I've cut to be the wallpaper for the side of my card. I'm just gonna apply some art glitter glue to them. And I've cut these to be the same width as this little panel here, but only so tall. You'll see what I mean in just a second. I'm gonna put this on and line it up exactly to the edge there, top and bottom. So there is one side of wallpaper. Now we're gonna put the other side on. This is the fun part of this card is picking out your home decor. <laughs> What do you want to be your wallpaper? You know, what do you want your bricks to look like? Things like that. That's the fun part. So imagine doing it to look like someone's home. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe in their color scheme or something. That'd be neat. All right. So there's my two side wallpaper panels. Now let's do the middle. I'm not doing these two insides here just for bulk. I don't really need it. I don't think it shows very much anyway. So this piece is going to get glued straight down there. So just gluing that into place. 
And now we can do our little wreath for the middle. So I got some foam tape here. I'm gonna put some at the top. It's a little too long. I'm gonna trim that away. Just gonna put that piece in the middle. Won't hurt to have a little extra support there. And the same at the bottom. So cut this away and add that to the middle. Okay, now I can release the backers here. And now this guy's gonna serve two functions. He's gonna be pretty and look like the picture over our mantle, but he's also going to keep our little mantle piece down, our little bridge piece, it's gonna keep it in place. So that's why I wanted him on a little bit of foam tape there. And he's just mounted there. You can see the top has the little border. I know this is extra, but don't worry. I did a little extra here so that whenever I put the piece in place, if it goes a little far, you still can see the pattern and you won't see the raw paper underneath. So that's why I kind of drug that one down a little bit. Okay, next let's fold our fireplace and get it ready to go. Actually, this is a great time to go ahead and glue this down. Look how cute this is. This gets glued just like this, but before we do, let's sandwich our, our vellum in there. So I'm putting a little bit of vellum here so that it looks like a little fire when we put our light um, behind it, a little candle behind it. So I'm gonna just put some glue here and glue down that little piece of vellum. I'm not using too much glue. You really don't need that much glue. We're gonna sandwich it in between anyway. The one thing you want to make sure you do is your vellum runs across the bottom even down here. That's what's really going to matter because you want that to make sure it doesn't um, cause your, your card to sit funny. So you want to make sure it's nice and flush at the bottom down here. So there is that one. Now, while I've got it like this, I want to stamp it. Now, I'm going to be using a cute little uh, Winnie Dog image in a few minutes. So I want to stamp a cute saying here. So I'm going to be using my stays on here because this is what I use on my vellum. And I love the smell of stays on every time I open it. Oh, it just reminds me of how beautiful it smells like almonds. And this little saying is from a Newton's Nook stamp set that I will show you in one second. Let me stamp it and then I'll bring it in and show you. But this one says, wishing you a long and joyful holiday season. And I'm going to put it to one side just a little bit. You'll see why when we get everything finished. But I'm just going to let that sit there for a second and get all that ink transferred. And I'm trying really hard not to twist. I don't want to blur that. Look how beautiful that is. I love it. And I need to let that dry. Go ahead and clean your stamp though so it doesn't stain because stays on will stain your stamps. So go ahead and take a second to clean it. And while this is drying, I'm going to put it aside. We'll glue it together in just a moment. While this is drying, let's do some coloring. So this is the Newton's Nook stamp set. How stinking cute is it? And that little guy right there, that's the one we're going to use today. And I already have it on my block and I'm going to be alcohol marker coloring it. So I'm going to use some of my finesse ink. This is the one that I used the other day. It's called um, Noir Black. And this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to work this guy around really well. Get him inked up really nice. And then I'm going to come right down here to the bottom. Will he fit across here? Yes, he will. And this is just a scrap piece of paper I'm going to color on. Just want to make sure he would fit there. So there's our little doggy dog. He's so cute. So the colors I'm going to use are 377, these are my um, Nouveau markers by the way, 403, 430, 412, 466, 491, and also 478. 478 is going to be his little body, it's called brown sugar and it's so cute. So I'm going to color him, just straight color him, no shadows, no nothing, I'm just coloring. Next, I'm going to use this 466 to do his little nose, just to make it a little darker than his body. Then 491 to do the bottoms of the little light strings. Then the fun part. I'm going to start with red, and I'm going to do this first little light in red. And then I'm going to skip yellow, skip blue, skip green, and do red again. So those will be the colors I put in there and then red again. So I'm just skipping three in between for my colors. There's his little colors done. And now I'm gonna fussy cut this guy. He's not really hard. He looks kind of hard, but he's not. Now, they do make dies for these and I, we may have them in store. I'm not sure if we do or not. If we don't, um, if they're available, I'll make sure Vince orders them on the next order. But I'm just gonna go around here and just kind of fussy cut this guy out and he'll be ready for our card. So there he is all cut out and ready to go. And now we can really put this guy together. Okay, so this little piece is gonna get glued right here. 
and the open hole on the beige color and the red match, so it's easy to line up. So we're just gonna add some glue. This is good and dry now, I'll let it sit and dry. So I'm just gonna add some glue here, anywhere the red is, because it won't show through. And then I can glue this down to my fireplace here, just like so. And then we can fold this flap back and go ahead and crease that down as well. Just hit that with our bone folder, like so. And we can glue this onto our card. So here's our card. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close one side down like this, and this panel then will get glued right here. And it will overlap your little wallpaper. That was kind of the plan. We wanted to hide that wallpaper a little bit. So I'm gonna apply the glue here and then with one panel down, like I said, I'm gonna glue it on. Okay. And just glue that to that side, just lining that up like that. And then here's a tip. When you go to do the other side, go ahead and close this panel down and open this side up and glue it down. Now, more than likely, you'll have some hang over here. Don't stress about that, just cut it away. It'll be fine. Sometimes, you can't be perfect and it's hard to match everything up perfectly. On my sample card I made when I was practicing, I had a little bit hanging over the edge, but if I did this, I could get rid of it. This one's actually lining up really well, so good. All right, so we glue that one down like so, and this is what we end up with. And see this little piece here is gonna go like that, and it's gonna stick there in the back behind our little picture, isn't it cute? All right, we still have some um, pretties to put on. Let's put our pictures on. Okay, so here's our pictures. We have what will be our frames, and then what are our little images. And I've just got some foam here, and I just wanna pop these guys up just for a little extra dimension here. So we'll put this on the back, peel that away, and then center these guys onto our little frames. These turn out really cute. They look like little pictures that you would hang at Christmas time. Perfect. Now we can glue these guys into place and I'm going to put this one on the left hand side, which will be, it's the left hand for you too, isn't it? I was saying it might be the right hand for you in the camera. And we're just going to put that a little closer to the top, not centering it exactly. See how I've pushed it up a little closer to the top, kind of like you would if you were hanging a picture. So there's one. Got some glue on the back of our second one and it's gonna go in the same area, but on the other side. Let me work that down to be even. Perfect. Just like that. Isn't that cute as it can be? Oh my goodness. All right, ready for this? The best part. So I have our little weenie dog. I'm gonna cut some foam to put on the back of him. And now just re reveal the adhesive and we can glue him down. He's so cute. And I put him right here like he was beside the fireplace, like he's warming up by the fire. Okay, I'm going to make for myself a little white mantle to go across the brick. It's just going to live right across this guy right here, just to try to dress that up before we add our garland. But let me show you what I did. So on the end of my little mantle piece, I took my um, stub punch. Was it my stub or my scallop? No, my scallop punch. So here's my scallop punch, because I did this while ago to see if this would work. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my little strip of paper, this little strip of cardstock, right up to the edge of one side of that scallop. Can you see how I have that lined up there? I want you to be able to see that. Right to the edge, and I wanna make sure it's tucked in good, and I'm gonna punch that. And see how that kind of gives me like a little bit of, I don't know, crown molding feel? It does to me anyway. Now what I need to do is flip it over and do the same thing on the other end. And it just kind of gives me the feel of having a little crown molding. I just think it works. So anything you've got in your stash will work. Just use whatever punch you've got. And now this little mantle gets glued to the top of our fireplace. Just like so. So there's our little mantle piece, and now we can put our garland on. So I just ran some art glitter glue along the back of my garland, and it will go right here. <laughs> Look how cute this is. I love this card. So adorable. Now, I would probably, and I probably still will do this, go back and take some 
um, glitter drops or some crystal glaze, something, and kind of drop on here and make it look like little ornaments. I think that would be cute in and around the garland. But there it is. Now, watch this. You take a tea light and you turn it on and you sit it inside of here. And throughout the holiday season, it glows like a little fireplace. Isn't it adorable? It'd be super cute if in your stash you have a um, fireplace or a little um, fire grate that you could put in, you could stamp in here. But I thought it was cute here to have the little sentiment there too, in case you don't have that. So there you go, guys. I cannot wait to see you guys recreate this. Let me stand it up to show you that it does stand up. So when your recipient gets it, it will look like that. You could add so much to this, and I know that you guys will. Y'all always do so much better than I do on these cards, but I enjoyed this one. It's a lot of work. This is a make a fuss card, okay? It takes a lot to get this one done, but if you just sit down and play, put on a video and go to make, and you'll have this one done in no time. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. And if you make this, I want to see it. Head to my website, maymaymadeit.com, and share your creations on our customer gallery. Um, it's right on the menu bar, right under gallery. You'll see where that's at, and you'll be able to share your creations with this as well. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying Christmas in July. Till next time, bye-bye.